Hello and welcome my Ninja Kiwi Birds, 1000 times their normal size. It's SJB here and today we're going over the biggest secret towers in Balloons Tower Defense 6. I'm going to start you guys off with a banger here with Adora. So first of all, make sure your Adora is level 20. And then all you have to do, it's very simple, make sure your Super Monkey is in range of Adora. And then buy up to not just a Sun Temple, but also a true Sun God. And when you do that, you're going to notice... Adora is going to get a transformation. She's going to transform into a more powerful version of Adora. That's pretty cool. It's actually really cool. You know what's even cooler? My sponsor! Oh wait, I don't have one. So if you guys want to be nice and press the like button for me instead, that would be that would be cool too, I guess. I'm considering a secret tower, basically anything that can do damage to balloons, whether or not it's in a regular game or in something like a random challenge that somebody has created. And if so, you should know about this one right here. If you click this sword stuck in the stone enough times, eventually it's going to pop out, fly across the screen, and it's going to hurt the balloons. It's pretty cool, but not amazing, I guess. You may have been playing Frozen Over, and you may have noticed that this little caveman monkey is stuck in the ice down at the bottom corner here. You also may notice that he actually blinks, and may look like he's alive. Well, there's actually a way that you can break him out of the ice. You can use a mortar to slowly crack open the ice, and you're going to see some cracks starting to form here on this cave monkey, and eventually... This cave monkey is going to break out of the ice and become a playable tower character. As awesome and as magical as that is. So I don't know exactly where he goes, but he appears somewhere generally in the beginning part of the screen here. And you can get unlucky or lucky depending on how things go. Uh, and he's a very interesting tower though. And he's probably definitely the most secret of the real towers that can actually do damage here. He does a smack, and if you notice on the red balloons, it's going to pop up, but if you notice on the blue balloons, he's also going to stun them. So, what's ridiculous about this is that it does not help out that much against reds, blues, and greens, and yellows, and etc., but it does help in stunning Moab-class balloons as well, which, let's be honest here, is pretty absurd. So, combining a cave monkey with some other towers can be a really, really interesting uh, combination here as well. Now, believe it or not, he is also a buffable character. So, if you want to alchemize him or overclock him or move him around with a heli pilot, you can do that. Because he's randomly placed, you may want to consider picking him up and dropping him in a more reasonable place if you're, you know, interested in something like that. Or, or even crazier... If you're interested, you can pick him up with your door gutter and make an automatic, pursuitifying, stunnable Moab popper thing. It's really interesting, very weird, and kind of funky, and sort of juicy, too. But even crazier. If you were open to it, you could also make sure you overclock him, permabrew him, door gunner him. And then keep him in range of some sort of village over here, so when the balloons come out, he will also get the jungle drums buff. And then, you start to get to the point where this uh, caveman can actually be a very a good addition to your team. Whether or not that's worth it, that's up to you guys. But it's just a cool idea. If you ever find yourself on Lotus Island, and you're not sure what to do, well, one thing you can do is click these little lotuses. I believe they come back every 10 rounds. And you can use them to stun the balloons. If I'm not mistaken, they also stun Moab class balloons as well. But I'm not going to play it around 40 right now. So you guys can test it out for yourself. If you're feeling frisky and want to know a cool fact. The Chomper used to be, and could still possibly be, one of the only ways to ever get a true one tower chimps with Geraldo. Because this is the only way Geraldo can pop lead balloons on round 28 and round 30. And if you're willing to call this a tower, this is the Chomper Tower. I don't know if I'd necessarily call these secret towers, but I wanted to include them anyways because they're kind of unusual. And if somebody hasn't seen them yet, um, because they're kind of take a long time to earn, uh, I want to show them off. So right now there are five Paragon Monkeys in the game, and Ninja Kiwi is still unlocking new ones, but it's taking them a long time to do so. If you have not noticed, once you get all of your fifth years unlocked, a new thing will be available here if you get enough experience to unlock 
There is currently a Dart Monkey, a Boomerang, a Ninja, an Engineer, and a Boat Paragon that can all be unlocked. Once you get your uh, three towers all up to fifth tier, then you can buy your Paragon Monkeys. There's more to it on how you can get them upgraded higher and higher, but I think that's above the scope of this video for today. So just know that all of those are possible to get in Paragons, and they are an absurdly, absurdly powerful tower in the game, but they're also really expensive. Believe it or not, there's actually another Adora secret and another secret involving the Super Monkey. This is a very well-known secret, probably one of the best well-known secrets in B36, but I still want to teach it to you guys to make sure that you can do it yourself. And it all starts with this monkey knowledge right here. There can only be one. There can only be one. That's all it says. So you have to figure out what the heck does that mean. So let's teach you guys how to get a vengeful temple and show you Adora's new ooh, secret transformation. So the easiest way to get a max temple is by spending $50,000 on three out of the four different types of monkeys. There are primary, military, magic, and support. Pick three of them, and usually I stay away from support if at all possible. So make sure you're spending your $50,000 within whatever way you see fit. I like going for this combo right here, and then upgrade to a sun temple. After that, it's a little bit more complicated for the true sun god, because what we want to do then is we want to get... Uh, uh, not just three of the four types, but all four types of the monkeys. So we're going to spend $50,000 on primaries, $50,000 on militaries, $50,000 on supports, and another $50,000 on magic. Then make sure that you've got two fifth tier super monkeys, the anti-balloon and the legend of the night outside of the range of your temple. And then last but not least, if you're interested in making sure that you get an Adora to have a transformation, make sure she is also level 20. And you are all set to go, my friends. We're going to go for the true sun god, and you're going to watch not only have him transform, you're going to see Adora's new ability, then we're going to go for a second dark transformation, and you're going to see a vengeful Adora with our vengeful temple, and not only that, we also transform Adora's temple map to be blood red. That is a pretty mega secret, my friends. Just to mention really quickly, this does actually make Adora more powerful and even more powerful than the previous true Sun God transformation, making this the most powerful Adora that you can get if you decide to buff her and things like that. If you guys are enjoying these secrets, don't forget to press that like button. Uh, I want to just mention really quickly that Adora does have those two transformations, but she also has skins, which allow for multiple different forms of those transformations as well. This is definitely not a super secret, but if you guys don't know, Pat can also be placed on water. All right, I don't want to call him a secret tower necessarily, but a secret aspect to him, because not a lot of people know this. Pat go on water, or even a combination of water and land, which is really, really interesting and cool. Since this does help against the balloons, I just want to mention it really quickly that there are two things in Workshop. You can activate the reverse motor, which makes this basically move slower. Or in addition, you can activate the track extensions, which will change the way the balloons have to go through here. The first time is free, and then after that it will start to take money to do this, so it's not always worth it. But it can be helpful in rare situations. Now that you guys know how to build a Vengeful Temple, it makes this a lot easier. But if you build a Vengeful Temple on Lotus Island... Not only do these lotuses pop things, but they also... Ooh. Ooh. Wait a sec. Instead of turning orange, turn purple. And release a big purple cloud of cool-looking gas here, which is kind of cool. Nothing too crazy happens with all of this, but it's just kind of a cool little secret to BTD6 that you might not know about. And last but not least, if you want to unlock the Giga Chad Super Mega Stone Dart Monkey, all you must do is spin him 150,000 times. This takes approximately 360 hours to do, so you have to keep your game running that entire time. Hope for no crashes, and just work on it, I guess. I don't know what else to tell you, man. It kind of sucks, but it's a really cool secret here. Uh, so we're going to be here for the next uh, few days spinning this guy, and uh, we'll let you guys know when we get this guy done. Ah, uh, did I get you? Did I get you? This isn't real, but it would be really cool if Ninja Kiwi did something like that, wouldn't it? 
I would love to see this become a secret randomly in some update and have somebody actually have to click it a thousand times to make something happen. That would be beautiful. Nonetheless, if you guys enjoyed this video, press that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.